we're moving on to the creative panel. So let's just open up the creative panel. The first thing is it has these looks or speed looks and there's a drop down menu with a bunch of different looks. They're also kind of filters. So they're similar to LUTs except the LUTs match with a camera and with how you're shooting. So if you're shooting with the Phantom or the Ari, any Ari camera or the Alexa or the Amira, that's why they have these specific looks here. The creative filters and the looks are more for any type of camera. We can preview what they look like by clicking these arrows over here on the right side or the left side by to scroll through these different filters. And if we find one we like, say we want, uh, let's just go with this clean Kodak HDR look, we can click it and it applies to this, this video clip. Let me just undo that and uncheck the basic correction so that we can see really how it looks. So it's in a space, look. Click on that, it applies right here. We can increase or decrease the intensity of this look with the slider right below it. Think of these looks as filters. If you use Instagram, it's very similar to what an Instagram fil filter is like. And then from there, we can go ahead and make all of our corrections and basic correction. And if you are using your looks, I would start with look here and then do the basic corrections or the corrections down here. Below this looks panel, we have adjustments. Let me actually turn off this look by choosing none from the menu and then I'll actually turn on our basic color correction. We can add a faded film look and this will make things more or actually less saturated and less contrasty. So you might have seen Samsung commercials. They use this effect a lot where everything looks very unsaturated and uncontrasty. So that's kind of a stylistic choice if you want. Sharpness, this is a cool tool. This will sharpen the edges of things in your footage. Great for interviews just to add a little bit of sharpness to people's eyes or mouths, especially if you're using a camera with a very shallow depth of field where it's hard to get everything in focus on someone's face. So for this footage, I will actually increase this to something like 25 or, or so. I don't want to go too much because then it starts to look really weird and it has a lot of artifacts to it because when you add sharpness, it's actually adding sort of this grain to the footage that I don't want. So I only do it a little bit. And don't get me wrong, this won't make out of focus footage in focus. It just makes stuff that's in focus already a little bit more sharp. We also have vibrance and saturation sliders here as well. Saturation does the same as what we saw in basic correction. It adds saturation to the entire clip or it takes away saturation. Vibrance is sort of a smart saturation. It increases the saturation of your frame, but it maintains the saturation of skin tone. So yellows, browns that you typically have in skin tones, it's not going to saturate, saturate those as much because it, when you do that with the saturation slider, you can see that it starts to look weird. Anthony's face gets really orange, which is unnatural. But if we use just the vibrant slider, it increases the saturation of say his shirt, the, this yellow in the background, but it maintains his skin tone. So that's a smart way to add more saturation. Lastly, we have shadow tint and highlight tint. The shadow tint affects the, the hue or the color of the frame or what's in the frame that's in the shadows, the darks. So say I wanna make the dark colors more blue, I can click in this middle and drag down to the blues. See how it makes it more blue? If I go way too far, it starts to affect everything, but just a little bit might be kind of cool. And then the highlights will affect the highlights. So if I wanna make the highlights more warm, see how the color, the, the blind or the curtains behind them become more yellow, that's making it more warm. That's affecting just the highlights. And then the tint balance is the balance between which one is more powerful, the shadow tint or the highlight tint. So this is a cool way to get more of a fun look or creative style. If you're doing music videos, something more experimental, this is a cool thing 
to, to use. And there are other similar things that we're going to be learning how to affect just particular parts of the film down below in these next panels. But this, for now, is the creative panel. Have fun with it. Start playing with the creative looks. Find ones that you like because there are some that I really like that um, I use for a lot of mine. Some of these Fuji looks, some of these Kodak ones. I don't use a lot of these ones that are like blue or gold uh, yet, but perhaps they'll come in handy in a future project. Thanks for watching and in the next video we'll look at curves.